How's it going guys? Matt here from Code Tech and Tutorials. We're back for the second part of BitSet. We're going to look at the math operations in this one. We're picking up right where we left off uh, from the first one, except now I've just written some um, operations here at the bottom. We're just going to walk through them and that should give you an understanding of how they all work. All right, so let's just get right into it. We're going to start here where we left off. I'm going to hit play and we're going to look at the console as we go. Uh, so where we're starting here is uh, we're still working with this 8-bit set. I like it because it's easy to read. Let's see here. That is right here after flip all the bits. Yeah, so the last thing we did in the last video was flip all the bits. The data we're working with looks like that. 1111011. One, 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 zero, one, one. So just that position 3 flipped to a 0, everything else 1. All right, so we're just going to start some operations. What happens with left shift. Left shift is this, uh, it looks like the console out thing you're used to. It shifts left and it shifts. We're doing a, uh, an equal sign here, which means it's destructive. Uh, so this is going to change the value in this a eight bit set. So basically we're going to left shift by the binary of two. So we're going to left shift by two and we'll see what happens. So we started with this data here, and after a left shift by two, you'll see that two zeros were introduced on the right side and everything else was shoved. So basically it just shifts everything over by however many you say and introduces zeros, and that's all the left shift does. So let's try right shift. It introduces zeros on the other side and pushes everything to the right. Uh, we're just going to do it by one here and you can see the right shift did indeed push all those to the right and introduced a zero on the left all right so that's pretty weird right but if you think about how binary works and how uh it, when you're counting with it it every time you have a new one to the left essentially doubles that means left shift multiplies in general now uh you got to be careful with it and well Okay, so if left shift multiplies, when, what, is, what happens if you move everything to the right? You're essentially dividing by two. And these are very efficient operations to multiply and divide, which is why they're often used. Um, just left shift one can multiply by two. Uh, right shift one will uh, divide by two. And it's not perfect though, because basically, oh, we did a left shift by two, which would have basically multiplied twice. But not in this case, because uh, this is what you have to be careful with, is when you left shift, if there's already a one on the end and you push it off, you're not actually going to be multiplying. You're probably going to be doing something weird. Like So you just got to watch out for, for that. Uh, if that doesn't make sense, just think about it more and how this is the maximum number. And if you push it off and introduce zero, what would happen? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't always work. So you want to check that bit if you're doing a multiplication. Basically, the number needs to be less than half of what it could be. Once you get over that range, things get weird. All right, well, let's make some comparisons now and check out some other stuff. Yeah, so we have, let's make eight bits, a constant eight bits of all ones, which is 255. We could also just call set on it, like, uh, like so, ones.set, which as we know from the first tutorial, would uh, set everything to the default, which is one. Uh, it's const though, so it doesn't like that. Uh, so in this case, we have to do it this way. But if it wasn't const, that would be fine. And same with the zeros, we could do a reset. Since it's const, we're just going to start it out as zero. Uh, but just so you know that that is a valid option when working with these when it's your variable. All right, so let's test the operators or, and, and zor with these zeros and ones. Um, so if we do an or with the last data we had, that's uh, this data here, 0, 1, 1, 1, uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, and we or that with all ones, what's going to happen? So or compares bit by bit, and if they if at least one of them is a one, then the value turns out to be one. So in this case, since we're comparing with all ones, uh, at least one of them is always going to be that. It's just going to be all ones. And if we or it with all zeros, then it's basically going to be an identity. Only the ones that were already one will stay that. And you can see that that happens. A little identity there. So that's how or works. Just compares bit by bit and also compares bit by bit and does what you would think and would do. They both have to be positive or both have to be ones uh, for it to work. As you can see, that effectively does an identity there as well. And if you do it with all zeros, of course, it's going to come back zeros because with and they both have to be it. And then we have exclusive or the superior logic block where 
they both have to be different. So if they both have to be different, uh, they can't, it can't be a double match. So if it's two zeros, it's going to be false. If it's two ones, it's going to be false. It has to be a zero on one side and a one on the other. That's exclusive or. So you can see that happens on the first bit. Zero and one turns to one. These three ones with other three ones just stay zeros because they're not exclusive and so on. And that happens with the zeros and as well. And you can see that it essentially works as an identity in this case, uh, just the ones that were already ones, since they're the only ones that are exclusive, but uh, there's some, some basic operations there. And since, in this case, uh, I want to mention that we're doing the math a little different. You know, I said like uh, when we do it uh, with the equal sign, like so, it's destructive. So it's actually changing the bits when you use that equal sign. It's just like when you do math normally in C++. But uh, if you're just doing a comparison like so, then it's not destructive. It just gives you the result of these parentheses and doesn't change either of them. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you know when you're modifying it and when you're just checking it. That's kind of a given, but I don't think I said it in the first episode, so I figured I'd say it now. All right, so we went all over those or, and, and zor. All we have left here is just a few other operations to play around with. So first thing we're going to do is just change it back to all ones, our variable we've been playing with, with set. And you can see that right here, all ones. And we're just going to cast it to a u long or an unsigned long, which is a part of the bit set library. And you can see you can get the value out of it. So we're going to play around with these and see what kind of uh, things we can get to happen with some left shift and right shift, just as an example. So if it's 255, it's 255 there. And then if we left shift it once, um, it's already 255, but normally you left shift to multiply by two. Uh, but in this case, left shifting, as you can see, introduces that new zero and pushes the leading one off of there. So it ends up actually minusing by one to 254, a left shift. So when it's already max value, if it's max value already, basically a left shift is gonna look like a minus one. So you gotta watch out for that. So let's try setting it to 123. 123 is uh, that in binary, close to what we had it before. So if we left shift on that one, then what happens? Since it's under half, it's actually going to multiply it. It's under half of the max that it can be. It's actually going to multiply it. So that's when it's super efficient. This left shift is like super efficient. So if you're in a valid case where you can get away with shifting to multiply, it's one of the most it's one of the best ways and same with division. So when you right shift, you're basically dividing. And this one's a little bit more reliable than the multiplication because you don't have to worry about the half value thing or the last bit being set. This last bit, of course, is worth half the, half the value of the entire rest of the, the binary number. It's just the way binary works. Uh, so that should make sense to you. If not, study how binary works. Yeah, the leftmost one is the most valuable by double the previous one, right? Let's continue on here and mess with this division. So we had that 246 value from before. Uh, we're going to right shift one. It brings back down to 123. Now 123 is an odd number. So when this is an odd number, something interesting happens in that it uh, still divides by two, but it rounds down. So if we right shift again, it turns into 61. And then if we right shift again, it turns into 30. And that's it. Those are the operations. So between these operations and some creativity, people come up with some highly efficient stuff. If you know of any other cool tricks, uh, let me know and maybe we'll make an episode three, but that's pretty much it for now because there's not a ton else. Those are the main things. I will say if you want to understand the bit set even better, have a look at the en.cpp reference and you should be able to expand a bit more if you want, but we pretty much covered everything in this. Um, I don't know if you want to test your knowledge, walk through this example and see if it all makes sense to you. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Matt from Code Tech and Tutorials over and out. Hope this helped. And a uh, huge shout out to the people that support me over on Patreon and YouTube members and all you guys. It does mean a lot. And it really does help me keep going making these tutorials. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.